Part 2 Introduction of the Hebrew Alphabet, the Aleph Bayit Ivri. As we start this next portion, I would ask that you would listen with your heart and spirit instead of your head right now, as these letters may be new to you. And since these symbols may not yet register within your consciousness, I do not want to overwhelm you with brand new information at the very beginning. This could lead to frustration, as when attempting anything new, there is a learning curve that must be adapted to. So be kind and gentle with yourself along the way. It will come to you one letter at a time. As we start this journey together, I would like to introduce to you the phrase Aleph Bayit Ivri. Let's take a closer look at the first two words of this phrase, Aleph Bayit. One of the most important aspects in the difference between Hebrew Aramaic versus English is that unlike English, every Hebrew Aramaic letter symbol are created by other Hebrew letter symbols. I call them constituent letters. And when viewing through this lens, we begin to see that the sacred languages are much like a type of shorthand. Although you may not see these constituent letters as you read the sacred writings, they did give up their vibrational frequency in order to create and corroborate with each other in order to bring forth new energies that in turn would affect matter. This is a code within the matrix of all we see, hear, touch, smell, and taste, and that which creates our reality as we project it. It isn't that the code changes the outside matrix, but rather how you perceive it to be through your operating system, expanded consciousness. Then you will realize that it is you that changes the matrix, as the code will reveal to you who you really are. Looking at the first word in this phrase, Aleph Bayit Ivri, are the constituent letters Aleph Lamed Pei that spell, give their energy to, the symbol Aleph. And the second word are the constituent letters Bet Yod Tav that form and give their energy to the symbol Bayit, Bet. If we were to drop the constituent letters, leaving only what their combined energies created and place them side by side, we would perceive a new word, Ab, which is Hebrew for the English word we know as Father. The last word of this phrase, translated as Hebrew, has the definition meaning to cross over. It isn't constituent letters that spell a symbol per se, but it is a word that has quite a bit of meaning to it with the addition of the little yod added to the end of it, which is the smallest of the Hebrew letters, it represents the work and deed of the hand, worship, vision, and power. We can then begin to see that Hebrew is the language which assists us to cross over into power. It is something that combines worship with vision that gives us this power. Crossing over to what? Higher dimensional thinking expanded consciousness that affects that which we decode around us. More light, more frequency, revealing that which once we could not see or decode within the matrix. Without going into the full extraction letter by letter, let me present to you a simplified interpretation of the phrase Hebrew alphabet to you, the Aleph Bayit Ivri. First, we are to build as one so as to cross over through the Father's language, which gives us power through the work and deed of our hands to become the strong leader of our house and temple. This is the language of sovereignty that assists us to cross over from being subjugated to having the power to become a ruler over our own temple. Why learn the letters today? How does it affect me? Why is this sovereign language important? Because it is a tool that will perfect love and cast out all fear. Whenever we move into fear, we give our power away. As entities that have an ego, which says that we are separate or separated individuals, many do not know that it is our ego that rules over our temple, and it rules over us through fear and not love until we tame it. 
This is the part of us, our ego mind, that can be easily controlled and manipulated through fear, which is the steam engine driving our vessel in survival mode. Fear is the exact opposite to love, false evidence appearing real, that will eventually affect our health, disease, if we do not get it in check. Fear will keep us from having a sovereign stand. These sacred languages equip us to overcome fear by expanding our consciousness, giving us the ability to see, decode the matrix through a higher states of being, that which my husband calls as complete and whole situational awareness, but perfecting love, which in turn casts out fear as fear is the anchor point of the beast ego. This is what we deliver ourselves from, that which was the illusion of separation, our ego edging God out, keeping us weak and feeble, and liberate us from the lesser system of the world that feeds off of our energy to keep this matrix so that we operate in a limited form. We do this by transmuting our lower vibrational frequencies, especially of fear, shame, guilt, anger, pride, distrust, into that of unconditional love through the heart. As we start to dethrone their beast ego, the matrix mind, we must enter in just like little children. So therefore we must learn our ABCs as it is simple as one, two, three. As this is an introduction to the study, I need to mention that the Hebrew Aramaic are also intimately connected to numbers. Every letter has a numerical value associated with it. This is called gematria. I will only be bringing in the first three letters, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, in order for you to begin to see something greater than what the English alphabet has presented to us in its limited perspective. Let's look at Aleph, the first letter. It has the simple gematria total of 1. The letter Bet has the simple gematria of 2. When added together, 1 plus 2 equaling 3, 3 is the gematria of the symbol Gimel. Why is this important? You shall see the fuller picture when we put all of the pieces together. The Gimel, through its constituent letters, creates the Hebrew word for camel. It has the spiritual meaning of that which lifts you richly. As a camel was a sign for those who possessed great wealth. It also carries the meaning of walk to the water, gather, assemble, plus the meaning to wean, ripen, in other words, maturation. In its original form, the Gimel was only two constituent letters, the Gimel and Mem, which would mean gather and assemble in chaos. Over time, it brought to itself the letter Lamed as a part of its collaboration in energetic workings, as the Lamed has part of it in its meaning as instruction. It is also a letter that represents authority. Now, a simple definition would be gathering the instruction needed to have authority over chaos, which is maturation. With the first three letters within the Aleph Bayit Ivri, the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet Gimel, we can begin to see something forming here, a journey through the matrix. What I will share next will not be exhaustive, but rather the surface skimming of the letters and their meanings. Listen to what the letters are saying to you. Make it personal. In the beginning, so as to be a strong leader, build yourself, your temple, on the inside through that which you will gather in order to assemble yourself. Instructions that carry and richly lift you up and out of chaos through teachings that will ripen and mature you. This is the establishment of a journey 
meant to mature us, building ourselves from the inside out, those who will sovereignly stand as conscious awareness as a spirit being, accountable for our actions, deeds, as royalty living with honor, integrity, and high moral character, creating that which is eternal from the inside out. This may sound intriguing to you as information, but the question should be, why should I take the time to learn it? Hopefully, you could begin to see within the first few letters that it is a roadmap to our becoming. The spiritual journey into sovereignty as perfected love will look different for all of us, as many will seek to mature through different teachings and teachers, modes and modalities. There is no right way, as many of us have been taught to believe. But just like any house that is to be built needs a set of blueprints so that the house can be stable and sound, so does the building of our own temples, the temple of our hearts. These blueprints were given to us as a way to check where we are in our spiritual journey, what our next step will be for us to take so that we do not build in the dark. Hammering nails is a dangerous task if there is not any light, revelation, to shine upon it so that one can hit the mark, the nail head, instead of the tip of the thumb. The light is the instruction found within the map, journey, blueprints as a step-by-step -step guide to build ourselves one letter at a time. The first three letters that I shared with you are just the beginning. 